Coach, Bra Coach Brown was just talking about their defensive line being very good. So any different problems than normal that they present? or You know, they're, they're a little different up front because, uh, you know, first of all, I think their they're two defensive ends are two of the best in the league. Uh, them and Baylor probably have two of the best sets of DNs. Um, they play really, really hard. Um, and, you know, that's that's – you know, for us, it makes me feel a little bit better because that's the best part of our offensive lines, our tackles. So, we, we held up pretty good against Baylor. Um, you know, so it's a challenge. You know, those guys are both both being seniors. They like challenges and they accept challenges. And I know they're going to work really hard and they're going to step up. Uh, but they do have a really good, really good DNs. And their inside guys are just real heavy, you know, really heavy and, and hard to move. Uh, they do a great job with pad level. Uh, you know, nobody's really just come up and knocked them off the ball, which, which obviously that's not our forte. So, um, you know, they do present some issues for us inside. Uh, the, the good thing is first time since maybe game one that we've seen a, a straight even front and not, had a, and not had a red shirt senior over the top of my center. You know, he's, he's had a tough, a tough five-week go here where every week we've had a, a nose guard that's probably either going to get drafted or be a, 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 be a guy that gets in, gets in a, a camp right over the top of them. So, so that's definitely going to be something, you know, that's, that's going to be different for us this week. What was working against Texas Tech that you put up almost 500 yards? Well, obviously, we, we were throwing the ball well. I, obviously, we were throwing the ball well. Um, you know, move the ball from 20 to 20 better than we've moved it all year long. Um, <clears throat> protected well. We had one sack. Uh, but when it came down to inside the 20, it was just critical areas, you know, whether whether it was missing a missing a uh, blitz, you know, put, giving pressure right there on one of them, or or dropping a ball, or receiver running the wrong route. It was just we got inside the twenty and and just couldn't couldn't uh, you know couldn't get it done down there and score the points we needed to score. We knew we needed to score touchdowns because we got down quick, so we we were trying to forego the field goals to get some points, but really just the uh, the the throw game was was really on him, and we were protecting well up front. For the uninitiated, you know, why can a unit struggle so much creating run blocking but be so good in pass protection? Well, it just comes back really to, to pure strength. I mean, that's that's what you know. That's to to move to move other people. Uh, you know, it takes a lot it takes a lot more power to move people around than it does to to stop them to slow them down. So you know, we're, we've got good feet and we move well. So we, we run the outside zone decent and uh, we pass pro pretty good, but it's just, you know, to get in there and move people, you got to be, you know, you got to be, you got to have that kind of power to get people moving around. You can't just have it in three spots. You got to have it, you know, every position has got to be able to do that. Uh, so that's, that's really the biggest thing is just, just having that, that, that power to move folks around. Unfortunately, that comes in January and February for you. Yeah, exactly. It does. And it comes in, you know, a lot of different, a lot of different phases. So, you know, we're in, it comes with some age. It comes with uh, having some older guys that have been in the program for a while. And, you know, you look at look at K-State, they do a great job running the ball. they got five redshirt seniors on the O-line, you know. Those guys have been working together for a while, and they're big physical kids. It's been in the strength and conditioning program for five years. And, you know, that's what we're trying to get to is those guys and not plugging and playing people as much as we want to have guys that grow into the position. You know, that's when you become a dominant O-line. The running plays that you did call were – the hats on hats the way they should be or were there yeah we had we actually had several of them uh we had several blocked up really well we threw the screen uh several times we had the we had the stretch play blocked up really well um you know we had i think there's there was three runs we had where we had hats on hats and and they undercut us a couple times on the stretch play and, and made uh made us got us on the line of scrimmage or in the backfield but other than that we we fit them up pretty good it's just you know it's not something that we're that we're majoring in right now we've we've uh you know, we know what our strengths and weaknesses are, and we're trying to play to our strengths. There's so much youth, and not just up front offensively, but wide receiver. Do, do you have, how much do you dial back your play? Well, well you just try to be, uh, you know, you want to be a little different every week. You know, I don't think we can go out there and just run the same stuff and, and, and move the ball doing that. So you try to be different, but you try to just make sure that you get it done early and make sure you get it practiced on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and walk through on Friday, Saturday, and where they know they got confidence in what they're doing. So you can't just be simple and do the same stuff. So you just got to be really careful in what you add and how you add it. And uh, you know, it's more about moving them around and, and try to get them to run the same routes, uh, but but move them around to different spots. And that the um, the draw play on the first drive in the red zone, I think they just overloaded you guys. Maybe. Yeah, we had it was zero coverage. 
and we're, we were supposed to throw the screen out there. So we got outnumbered in there. Um, we got outnumbered pretty quick. They brought more than we could handle. Uh, you know, I'd like to have uh, just at least, you know, the screen, they had man out there, and it was going to be a catch tackle probably. But in that situation, that would have been our best option. When you're almost handing it off to the, the tackle, he almost <laughs> took it from us. We, you know, we it, we weren't we were hats on hats, but we didn't exactly win. You know, too yes, too many hats. Hey, Matt, did you guys run that tunnel screen? I guess the one outside yes. when you flood your offensive lineman out. Mm -hmm. That that seems so difficult for big guys out in space trying to get smaller guys who are moving. Um, do you try to? I know you try to block people, but is it just to maybe get get in the way and create a lane? That's exactly to what, what you – you know, used to on that play, you could get out there and throw on people, and, and they get out – you know, you go out there and throw and try to cut them, but with the new rules having to be 10 and 2, you don't want to take a chance on getting a 15 yard. So you have to – you get them out there and actually try to turn them into basketball players a little bit. You know, they got to understand what where do I break down and when do I get my hands up. And if I get my hands on them, it's great, but most of the good linebackers in this league, you just try to make them stop their feet and run around you. And, and then if you can get the receiver to get vertical after he catches it. You know, we had that one fit up real well, and the nose guard just decided not to rush. You know, that's always an issue when one of those guys decides not to rush and you're bringing the ball right back inside. So he was he was kind of a big body we had to avoid, so Sam ended up taking it flat. It's never – it's usually not a good play when it gets that flat all the way across the field with the, with the linebacker speed and safety speed to catch you while you're running sideways, you know. It looked like their middle linebacker could run. There was some instances. It looked like you had something, and he was able to make a play. And yeah, he, he's down. a really good player. He's a, number one's a really good player. And I, I, he's does he lead? Does he lead the league in tackles? Uh, he was right there at it. I know, and uh, you know, but he's he he does a really good job. He's going to be a really good player. Matt, for sake, for sake of argument, I'll bring out my argumentative side. You say you like to change every week. Would it not be better to get four or five plays that? You, that you that you run and run well, and run. The plays don't really change. It's where we line them up. And that's the big thing is you can't let them just dial in on like, hey, when this guy lines up here, here, and here, this is what you expect. And they get really good at getting, you know, of recognizing that. You're running the same plays. You're running the same route. You're, uh, you're blocking the same scheme. It's just we're lining people up in different spots just so the defense can't just straight dial in and anticipate what you're going to do. So that's what we're trying to do. We're not really changing and having to teach everything new. We really are, uh, try to stay away from that and have them doing the same thing over and over. It's just maybe, uh, you know, like a, maybe you were the outside receiver before, now you're going to line up inside. Maybe we did it out of trips, now we're going to bunch it up. Maybe it was two back, and now we're going to do it out of one back. So you're just trying to, trying to keep them from defensively being able to say, hey, I know this formation, I know what they're going to do. So it's not, not really teaching new stuff. It's just teaching alignment. It's pretty easy to teach alignment. Teaching, uh, James played, I think, right guard the whole, yes. whole game. Just yes, he did. How did that sort of come about? I know you liked having right side guys and left side guys. So Yeah, well, with, with, with Barrett down, uh, you know, I had to have a, another right side guy. So, and, and he was playing really well, and Mike was playing really well behind him. They were splitting reps the past several games. So uh, I just moved Gamitter, you know, to the right side and let, and let Mike stay on the left. And Mike played really well. Mike had a, Mike had a really good game. Um, Gamitter played not as good as he has been, but, you know, when you switch sides of the ball, it's a little tough, especially when you've been a defensive lineman your whole career. Um, <clears throat> so that, that was the reason for that change. Are you optimistic about Chase being able – I know he warmed up. Um. Yeah, I'm optimistic. He just didn't feel um, – just didn't feel 100%. Kind of like Chandler, you know, I don't, I don't ever want to put a guy in. He, he, was, he was there for reserve. If we needed him, would have played him. He just didn't feel like he could give the team, you know, 100%. And I felt better about putting Gamitter over there if, if Chase wasn't going to be able to go 100%. But, you know, after a week of rest, uh, you know, I think he's going to be better this week. So we'll, we'll have a little different lineup. Hey, Matt, what does um, the end season, like, conditioning look for for the guys you're trying to develop? In the background, are they doing more lifting? Are they more focused on on getting bigger? And oh yeah, like uh, we 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 have a developmental program, but those guys are they're, they're still in all, they're doing off season lifts. They lift you know a couple days a week in the morning, a couple days a week in the afternoon. So they're still you know four or five days a week. They're they're hitting it really hard. So these young guys, you know, we had we had Monday night football um, last night, and it was uh, you know it's always fun to watch those guys this time of year. They're getting a little bit better and getting a little bit better. So so we're developing some some younger guys, especially those two young tackles with uh, with Yates and Parker Moore. They're really starting to come along. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing those guys grow and add to what we have next year. Then you know <clears throat> uh, the guys we can bring in mid year, junior college are going to be really big for us. So you know we're, we're going to. 
we're going to keep pressing this thing and keep trying to, you know, keep trying to recruit and get better and better. Are you at Liberty State just roughly a ballpark number you're looking to sign on the O-line? I'm looking to sign four. Looking to sign four and then, you know, you know how it goes. It could be five. Matt, where are your quarterbacks right now in terms of either checking something off at the line on their own or running a check with me, going to the line with two plays? Is that close to happening, still kind of far away? You know, that's really uh, that's really Coach Brown's area. He, uh, you know, he's he's not big on the uh, – we'll give them some stuff and they'll look over the sideline and we'll, and we'll make some decisions. But, you know, we don't really give them – not very often. Maybe one time a game for something really easy to see. Uh, but we, we don't like to put that on those guys a whole lot.